All right, good to have you with us here, on ENCA. For many years, we all know the country's railway infrastructure has been in a dire state. It's been the victim of poor maintenance, vandalism, uh, theft, and also arson. Now, government says it's going to invest 7 billion rand to improve the service. Well, let's get the thoughts of that on railway from railway expert uh, David Williams joining us this morning. Hello to you, David. Thanks for your time joining us this morning. 7 billion, it's a lot of money. How do we stop it from vanishing because of vandalism, theft, and all of those good things. I think the government would quite like to blame it on COVID and the various conditions. But passenger rail in South Africa, uh, indeed rail generally in many ways, has been declining steadily over the past two decades, long before the COVID lockdown when a lot of the vandalism and theft took place. Uh, for example, in 2010, there was something like 600 million uh, passenger journeys in South Africa, uh, if you add up every time a person traveled by a commuter train, uh, 10 years later that had dropped to a third of that number. So I see that the Mabopani line between Pretoria uh, and Mabopani is said by Prasa now to be operating again since yesterday. I gather one of the Cape Town lines is operating. But this is a network where we, we have a, a total collapse, where there have just been no services for mm. at least a year. And the interesting thing here is, yes, it may be running again, but at what scale? How many trains? How are they going to get the passengers back who've had to be using buses, walking, uh, taxis, and so on? It's not simply a question of running trains again. Like any service, if it disappears for a year, the market goes elsewhere. Uh, and that is just one line. There are 34 main commuter lines in South Africa. 27 of them have been completely out of service. The overhead equipment has been uh, stolen on most of the network. Uh, the stations themselves have been damaged to the point where they have to be completely rebuilt. So yes, billions of rand, but the question has to be, how long is this going to take? Is that a realistic estimate for a network which uh, might have been destroyed by a war, but actually the destruction is worse than that? So we're using the word upgrade, but from what I'm hearing, uh, David, this is actually a 7 billion rand repair. So let me throw your questions back to you. Is this enough money? Is mm. it going to be sustainable? Well, the estimates are, for example, that the overhead equipment will cost uh, to restore will cost uh, half a million rand per kilometer. Now, depending on the size of the station, we were talking several millions of rands. Uh, to fix a station, and, and in some cases, not, as you say, to repair it or restore it, but to, to rebuild it, to build it from scratch. And uh, I'm just wondering whether these estimates are accurate. The other thing it doesn't take into account is how many people are going to be working on this repair or restoration or rebuild work. Do you have one gang which moves from one place to another? That will be a certain cost, and, of course, it would take years for them to fix everything. Or do we have several gangs, one in Cape, or several in Cape Town, several Durban, several Johannesburg, Pretoria, all working at the same time on fixing all these things that need to be done? Uh, that would obviously be a very different cost. And we haven't been told how many people are going to be engaged on this and what their cost would be. And of course, the, the, the other aspect is the security, which you started with. A lot of this damage is because security was simply non-existent during the COVID uh, era. Mm. and which we still have. They said they're employing new security guards. But if you're restoring the infrastructure, we need to know who is going to guard it. I mean, the people who've been stealing the rails, the overhead wires, the signaling copper and so on, these are armed gangs. They are not opportunistic thieves. So you need really seriously well-trained security guards, probably armed on much of the network, to stop all this happening again when it's restored. Uh, let me ask this as my uh, last question to you, David, uh, briefly, if at all possible. Uh, how long do you think, how long is this railway of time uh, before we can get up and running the way it used to be? Uh, and do you see 7 billion rand being realistic if you had to look into your crystal ball? Look, you don't know how they've done the sums, but I would say certainly not. Uh, the personnel costs alone uh, are probably going to be more than they estimate. I think we have a political problem here, too, is that the minister is saying certain things, and obviously he wants to get the railways running again. Prasa says it'll take between six months and three years to fix everything. 
Well, that's not the estimates I get from private sector contractors and engineers. But PRASA is in a very difficult position. There may be executives there who have to do what the minister says they are all going to do, and they have to say that. It seems unrealistic to me, unless you have a massive task force working simultaneously to build this network. As I say, it's not simply a question of touching up with the paint here and there. It is actually reinstalling, rebuilding much of the network, apart from trying to get the customers back who must have gone to the road and elsewhere in the meantime. Well, that's what I was about to ask you. In fact, maybe let me leave this as my final question. I promise I'll leave you alone after this. On the mm. business side uh, okay. of this, we've seen buses, we've seen taxis now climbing into that gap that has been left uh, as well. I mean, how does an organization, whether it's the transport ministry or PRASA in this case, gain the trust of people to come back? Because when they did trust these organizations, they were often left stranded. They couldn't get to work. They couldn't get to school. They were left standing literally in the rain. It's a trust issue, this, isn't it, as a, as a business problem? That's correct. And even if the trains are running, for many years, they were not reliable. Um, and whatever the, the, the faults of the, of the old regime uh, that the ANC inherited infrastructure, the trains were working. And uh, they stopped working reliably. And if you need to get to work in the morning, you can't hope, hope for the, the train to arrive on time. You need to know that it will or you make alternative arrangements. As you say, trust has been broken. There's also a serious safety issue. The rail safety regulator over the past 20 years has made repeated findings against Prasa for not operating their trains safely. So that's another issue. We're talking trains that themselves don't work properly. The doors stay open when they're running. We're also talking about people being assaulted and robbed on trains and stations. And that in itself, uh, there will be many commuters who may wish to come back if trains are cheaper, which they were. Uh, but as you say, you've got to trust that they're going to uh, do the job for you. That's it. You can't switch over from what you now know is a, a consistent form of transport and go back to an issue that you had uh, years before. Uh, railway expert David Williams, I'm sure we're going to speak again. What a pleasure uh, having you on ENCA uh, this morning.